Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. <laughs> Dell challenges the status quo, questions everything, and empowers you to return to your core beliefs to make your life better. If you're ready to hear the truth and get your roadmap to the lifestyle you really want, the next hour will change your life. And now your host, self-made millionaire, national award-winning investor of the year, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Well, today, my friends, this is Tell Del Tuesday, and uh, of course, we have someone on interesting for you to meet. Before I get there, I just want to remind you that our expo, our national expo, once a year, is coming up on September 2nd and 3rd, and that's a Friday and a Saturday. You don't want to miss that. It's in uh, Dallas, Texas, and uh, realize that there's going to be anywhere from three to 5,000 real estate investors there that you can network with, along with educational classes, seminars, and uh, networking events. There's going to be all kinds of vendor. We have an actual vendor area where you can meet hundreds and hundreds of people to do business with. So it's going to be a big event as it is every year. And uh, one of the people you're going to be able to meet there is one of our mentors, national mentor, and I think it's important to understand Lifestyles is national now. One of our national mentors, Mr. Mark Petz. Mark has currently around 5,000 units, about 180 of which he manages himself as a lead investor uh, and what we'd call syndicator outside of Lifestyles. And he's also a passive investor in another 400, 891, that's a tongue twister, uh, units. And uh, so he's got quite the experience. He's been with us since 2015. Uh, he just recently, in 2020, became one of our mentors. We're really happy to have him on the team, and we're really happy to have him on the show today. Mark, welcome to the show. Dell, thank you so much. It's an amazing time to be a real estate investor, especially in Arizona. So um, I'm so glad that uh, I'm here to uh, talk about real estate with you. Well, Mark, you've been here since 2015, so you've gone through the portion of our growth that was exponential. I mean, we grew ever since 1990 when we started, but in the last five, ten years, or last five to six years, we've grown exponentially all over the country. And now you're a national mentor. Being that you're so successful where you're at right now, what does it feel like to be mentoring people all over the country? Well, I'll tell you, um, it's an honor. I just really uh, want to be able to give back uh, from the time I started with Lifestyles and the success that I've had, um, I just love the opportunity to help others uh, achieve, you know, what I've done. And uh, being a national mentor is fantastic, meeting people from all over the country. A lot of them are investing in Arizona, which has been phenomenal. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was just reflecting, and uh, we've actually closed or in the process of closing uh, six multifamily deals here uh, this month. And uh, when I look back from when I started this role a year ago, it's it's just amazing the growth that we've seen. Yeah, I think Phoenix is going to be a very large market for us uh, for demographic reasons and also because of it's just one of those places where people are moving to get away from California uh, to have a good, you know, good weather and so forth. And I, I just think it's a place that's going to grow really rapidly. Let's get into something about you. Tell people just a quick brief, doesn't have to be that brief, but background of where you come from, a little bit of your history, the fact that you did a little real estate before you came here, dabbled in it. But I thought your presentation the other day where you were talking about how you couldn't find the the real factual information, the meat you needed to really dig in and uh, until you came here. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and that part of trying to find a way to get where you want to be. Yeah, so Del, I've been uh, married to uh, my wife, Jody for almost 22 years. Anniversary's coming up here. I've got two daughters, uh, Layla, 16, Scarlett, 13. And uh, I grew up in a, a suburb of uh, west of Cleveland. Uh, so, you know, middle-class family. You know, my dad worked hard. He was a fireman, had uh, several small businesses. So I kind of grew up with that mentality of just work hard, go to uh, school, get a good education, and, uh, you know, get a good job after that. And so I was working in corporate America. And uh, really, after 10 years or so, just started to have this itch to kind of have my own business. Um, I started, uh, you know, seeing more and more real estate's great investment, uh, bought some single family houses and read a lot of books. I'm, I'm very analytical. I was an engineer. I I needed to understand everything. And the, all the books that I read just kind of led me down to what are the tax advantages? How do you manage a, a rental house? 
and really just didn't give like that full map on how to do it and all the things to think about, when to buy, when to sell, what are those trigger points. And that's really where Lifestyles came in and helped put that all together for me. And on top of that, you've got great mentors to work with, and you've got uh, others who have already done it. And those are some of the best resources, talking to them. And they've run into the challenge probably that you're facing previously, and they're able to give you great advice. And you know, get you onto the next step and uh, and make your deals profitable. How did you find out about lifestyles? So I had relocated to uh, Dallas in 2015 for a corporate job and heard it on the radio several times. And you know, I was already at that time had six single family houses. They were appreciating well, decent cash flow, not as best as I could have been. But um, so I was ready to jump in and, and learn some more. And I went into the, the two-hour free seminar that uh, where an actual investor was there talking about her experience um, buying houses and, you know, how she was successful with it. So I assume that you went on to the two-day. Yes. Uh, after that, um, I had joined at the, uh, the lower-level membership, and then um, it was probably a month or so later, I uh, was able to get the two-day class in. And uh, that was a game changer. That I immediately signed up um, for the uh, preferred investor group after that uh, two-day class on that Sunday night and uh, just started jumping in, uh, networking, and, and meeting other investors in the Dallas office. So let's take this back to you're an engineer, you're analytical, you have already have experience, and yet you went for more education. Okay, all those are good things. We're lifelong learners, right? You're sitting in that room... I know how it feels to be in a room, you know, you know, I know a little bit about what I'm doing here. I'm not, you know, I'm not the sharpest blade in the drawer, but I'm not the dullest either. So you, you're looking at everything, you're, you're thinking about it, you're analyzing what they're saying, you're maybe even critiquing it, and then boom, something hits you. I call it the aha moment. The light bulb goes off and you go, wow, that's the piece I didn't have. What was it for you that was a light bulb moment in that two days? Yeah, certainly. There are a lot of uh, light bulb moments. Um, I just recall being so excited after the first day, uh, which covers single family, and had the attitude that night, told my wife, I'm like, we're going to buy like 30 single family homes, and then went into the second day and learned about multifamily, which I had very little knowledge of, and totally changed my view on things. Um, and that's the direction I ended up going. But the big aha moment was just being able to get cash flow um, out of real estate, uh, I just where I lived, and my view was just more of a buy and hold strategy. I'd buy it and just cash out big time in, in ten years, and or whatever the case may be. But uh, the ability to invest and really measure and get that cash flow and have it replace your income was probably the biggest uh, aha moment for me. Now, where were you living at that time when you thought that you couldn't get cash flow? Were, were you still living in Dallas at that time, or was that somewhere else? I was not. It was um, uh, California. I, I kind of had that mindset. And then uh, Arizona as well. And I, I think the problem was I just didn't uh, get the right formulas together on the houses to buy. I was probably looking at too expensive houses where, yes, you're getting the appreciation, but the cash flow was minimal compared to what you put into it. Gotcha. Okay. So you come out of the two-day, and you now decide it's going to be multifamily. You said you immediately jumped in networking. Were you surprised how open people were about their finances and about their businesses and their business systems? Yeah. I mean, I would say that's the the best part, really, for me of uh, joining Lifestyles. It's just meeting others who, they're in the same boat. They're, you know, trying to save with their their 401k or their IRA, and you meet these people, and they talk about and openly share, yes, I invested with, you know, this lead, this syndicator in this property. This is what the return looked like. So you have those conversations in these uh, network meetings. And then on top of that, there's presenters at uh, case studies or road trips that uh, really help educate you. They share uh, their whole journey, how they found the property, what do the numbers look like, how much do they put in what was the rehab budget and you get to start seeing some of these numbers and the details and just absorbing it and learning more and more from that okay we're um, going to have to go to break right now we're going to pick back up right there when we come back we'll be right back with mark Petz in the del Wamsley radio show
Welcome back. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Here with me today on Tell Del Tuesday is Mark Petz out of Phoenix, Arizona. Mark is a uh, current mentor for us, a national mentor, multifamily. He also is uh, the owner of 5,000 units. So if you think you need someone that knows what they're doing to help you, Mark would be one of the people you'd want to run into. So Mark, as we were coming out of the break here, we were talking about you coming out of the two-day and what, your, what you know, the aha moments and talking about the fact that you were not surprised, but you were, you know, really thought that people helping people was a very important thing. Let's go backwards now and talk about what you were thinking when you came out of the two-day. Did you decide to go passive right away? Is that what it was? Or did you decide to go IRO right away? What was your thought process there? And why did you pick what you picked? When I came out of the two-day, I really had the mindset of uh, being a passive investor. I had a uh, corporate job and uh, you know didn't have time, but uh, being a passive investor was a good fit. It uh, really takes very little time. You uh, educate yourself, uh, learn how to you know read the offerings, and uh, Lifestyles teaches you that. And then you just uh, cut a check and uh, collect your uh, quarterly distributions from there. So uh, how did you, when you got going, and I said you said you were networking, how did you decide which deals to get into? So the nice thing was at these uh, networking events, um, there's an opportunity to go ahead and shake hands and talk uh, straight with the uh, the general partner or the lead and have an opportunity to learn about their background, uh, get to know them, and uh, have some, you know, potential information about the property, what they're looking at. And then, you know, once you, you have that comfort level with meeting that person, that gives you the confidence as you're reading the numbers that, you know, this you know this person and... Uh, They've got a track record. You've asked other members, perhaps, how they've performed, and you're able to uh, feel confident to put your money um, into their deal. Would you say that when you were first starting that you felt that it was more important to pick the lead investor or pick the type of deal you're in, the quality of the deal, how good the deal was? Did you put more weight on the horse or the jockey is what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I uh, put a little bit more weight on the jockey, and the reason for that is uh, you can talk to other members and kind of get an understanding of their track record, and then on top of that, um, you know, you have confidence that they know what they're doing, they've done the research, and uh, they're picking the right property for you. And, you know, there's a lot of variables that go into it, but uh, in general, if you're in a good market and uh, you know that lead has a good track record and really understands the business, uh, you can feel confident to invest with them. Did you have a plan as a passive investor as to, first of all, let's talk about how many deals you wanted to do. Secondly, how were you going to divide your money up? Were you going to put it all in one deal, spread it out, whatever? That type of diversification. Yeah, when I started, I met with uh, my mentor at the time and laid out a plan to figure out how to replace my uh, corporate income. And so I had, you know, a target number in mind on how much uh, I needed to deploy. And then from there, I I just started looking at all the areas that I could uh, pull resources from, whether it was uh, my IRA or current stocks and bonds or some home equity and started making moves to get that money ready to deploy. And then from there, you know, I divided it up into several different leads that I had met and felt comfortable with and uh, kind of that diversity plan. But most of the properties uh, were actually in the uh, DFW area. So I knew that was a, a good market uh, to invest in at the time with the job growth that was going on. What about the diversification and or lack of or not deciding to do it? Were you more specific or were you more diverse in your concept of going for a value play, which doesn't have cash flow up front but has much greater upside potential on the backside, or a yield play, which is mostly cash flow oriented, although there may be some small amount of upside in the backside? Did you have a decision on that? Yeah, I, I kind of went for a blend. I was focused on value deals when you could find them. They're, you know, not as easy to, uh, there's not as many of them out there just to grow my uh, equity. But uh, I also at the same time had more of a hybrid, kind of that middle of the road where there was some opportunity to create value and then also get some cash flow from it. So that in that three to five year period, you know, I'd be looking to uh, get a nice uh, return of 
you know, double my money or so. Mm -hmm. So how many passive deals did you do the first year, the second year, third year? Give give us kind of a timetable how you walk through that. Yeah, so my first uh, passive deal was uh, I joined in uh, May of 2015, and by the end of 2015, I believe I was in about uh, four to five deals. And then I continued to uh, move money into 2016 and did another uh, four to five deals in 2016, and about the same for 2017. And, you know, it takes about 18 months, 24 months when you start uh, getting some of the, uh, the cash out refis or, or sales start. But uh, typically, I was receiving distributions after, you know, that, that six month period. So, it, so I just kept building on that, and as those cash out refis occurred or sales, I would just keep redeploying that money as quickly as possible and create a, a snowball effect. Um, and that's really how I was able to get to, uh, you know, about twenty five uh, passive deals at this point. So that's what you're in twenty five different ones that add up to that almost five thousand units. Correct. Let's talk about the concept of diversifying regionally. Have you done any of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as uh, lifestyle started to grow nationally, uh, there were several leads who started focusing on markets um, outside of Texas that had great job growth and the right mix and dynamics for investing in uh, multifamily. And uh, so I've got uh, properties where I've invested in um, outside of uh, Texas. I've done uh, Arizona. I've done uh, Atlanta, Georgia area. I've done uh, Topeka, Kansas, uh, down in Florida, so several markets around the country, and and really so geographically, it uh, gave me a little different look as far as uh, that diversity and you know an opportunity to learn about those markets as well. Now you are national or one of our national multifamily mentors. What do you think? when you mentor people, what do you think about them saying to you, I need to buy where I live, or I don't need to buy where I live, or do you say that's irrelevant when you're a passive investor? Well, certainly as a passive investor, you can invest anywhere. It's all done. The ability to do it all remotely is not a challenge. And typically when a property is uh, purchased, that lead does uh, you know, an orientation tour for that passive if you wanted to fly out and actually uh, tour the property. Well, we're going to take a break right now. Hold that thought, Mark. We'll be right back with Mark Petz and the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to the Del Wamsley Radio Show. With me here today on Tell Del Tuesday is Mark Petz out of Phoenix, Arizona. And Mark was uh, sharing with us uh, some information about being a passive uh, as he got into being a passive investor. Mark, you had a pace that was aligned with your um, amount of money that became available to you. you move pretty quickly, actually, if you're doing four or five deals a year. So that worked out well for you to get quite a few deals. What I'm interested now in, now in this segment, is that where was the transitional point when you said, hmm, for whatever reason it was, share with us why you decided you wanted to become a lead investor yourself? Sure. The uh, deals I was doing as a passive, I got very excited uh, reading all the summaries that I'd get each month from the uh, leads, and then I would uh, be looking at all the financials, and I just wanted to learn more. And really, I was at the point where I took all the classes, uh, networked as much as possible, and the only way to learn more was just to go do it. Um, And on top of that, I I did want to accelerate to retirement. Uh, You make a little bit more with uh, being the lead as well. So those two pieces really together uh, gave me that transition point, and that occurred about two years after joining. So, you know, roughly uh, beginning of 2017, and that's when I knew I wanted to become a lead and started talking to my mentors about it and other uh, leads 
you know, at these meetings and uh, really was uh, certain that that was the road that I would take. And that was also when you moved back to Phoenix, wasn't it, or back to Arizona? Yes, I uh, was previously living in uh, Phoenix area in Scottsdale, and uh, my my wife and family wanted to move back, and my uh, company worked with me to move me back there. And at the same time, as I was learning about how to evaluate markets, um, I could see Arizona and Phoenix in particular just evolving as a strong place to invest. So I knew just that combination of becoming a lead, um, I'd be in the right market, and so it would be easier to find a property that I could start with. So you decided that was the right thing to do for you. What was your steps that you took? What were the steps you took to move towards being a syndicator and a lead investor? So the steps really are part of the education that you receive. You you take the classes online. There's live classes. And then just meeting with uh, my mentor at the time, who was J.B. Durham, and then he kept meeting with me each month. We laid out more steps. I would uh, go complete them. And then on top of that, I started working with the uh, LU brokers and said, this is what I'm looking for. And then, you know, talking to other leads at the time as well, I got a lot of support from the actual leads uh, on the deals that I had uh, invested in and just put all of that together and built out the steps to uh, go find that property. And then working with uh, LU Brokerage, they called me up and uh, had a property for me and ended up partnering with the uh, Marcus Milchap folks out here in Phoenix and found that first property, toured it, and made an offer. Now, before you made that offer, how long did it take for you to, to get LEED certified at Lifestyles? The process itself is a, a few months. You, you go through the additional education and really have a clear understanding of how the SEC works and you know, what are those steps that uh, you take to be in compliance? And then just understand, you know, what are the other dynamics that uh, you need to know as far as building your team? I mean, that's the biggest piece is becoming a lead is you've got to have a, a good lender. I used um, a lifestyle uh, broker for that, uh, Old Capital. And then, you know, I built up a team around property management for attorneys and really leveraged off the, uh, the LU vendors and, you know, other leads and uh, also some of the, you know, the locals in the market that had that knowledge as well. So, but building that team is the biggest part to uh, making sure you're successful. Now, you being the national mentor, do you have a version of the aspiring leads meeting being uh, you guys are all over the country? Do you guys meet with the aspiring leads nationally? Yeah, what we do is um, on top of just doing uh, regular calls, with aspiring leads uh, one-on-one, uh, we do a, a monthly call, a Zoom call, where we uh, usually have uh, guests on, on the call that uh, educate us in different areas. A lot of times it's lenders, uh, just all across the board, you know, everything you need uh, for multifamily. And then on top of that, a lot of the, uh, we share our stories, um, you know, what are the lessons learned, you know, leads who are experienced, um, just so some of the others can kind of hear the journey they took and, you know, any potential issues they had and how they overcame them. And those uh, meetings uh, usually spin into one-on-ones. And so it's it's just a good network that uh, we've developed with our team as far as, you know, whether you want to be an IRO or aspiring lead, it, uh, it really helps give you confidence on how to approach it. Okay. So you went through the classes, you got ready, you found the deal. Take us quickly through the process of buying a multifamily and how you have to help people and mentor people through it. So a lot of it is just um, outside of building your team, having those uh, the knowledge of what each member brings to the team. We've got a a great uh, pro forma. Uh, We call it our multifamily quick analysis form. And that's kind of the the piece that uh, analytically brings it all together for an aspiring lead or you know, independent rental owner, and just looking at that document and talking through the expenses, what do your uh, pro forma rents look like, and what capital improvements you're going to bring into it, and then ultimately, what do those returns look like, you know, out from one to year three. And and that really helps, uh, from an analytical standpoint, give confidence that it's the right property at the right price uh, to go pursue. 
All right, so you've built this pro forma of what you're going to do with this project. The question now is, you've got to distribute that and find yourself some investors. Did you build your investor list before you started looking for a property, or did you just wait until you had a property to start looking for investors? No, really, one of the steps as you move into becoming an aspiring lead is to start that networking and going to meetings and uh, introducing yourself and really networking with other passive investors. And then, you know, they end up reaching out to you and you create a uh, investor list. And then as you're pursuing your property, you can just give updates to your investor list and then ultimately, you know, give them the... uh, the documents, the uh, PPM, private placement memorandum, and then they can look and evaluate and see if it's the right fit for them. But you've developed a relationship with them, and that's you know part of becoming an aspiring lead is developing that investor uh, network so that uh, they can help you with the money you need to close on these larger deals. So developing that list is pretty easy to do with the way we're set up at Lifestyles, where the names of the aspiring leads and regular leads are online, and the passives can all find them and decide if they were interested in that person. How about the expo? You know, there's about anywhere from three to 5,000 people at each expo. Of them, 2,000 at least, two or 3,000 are passive investors looking for a deal to get into. Did you ever sit into the networking event, giant networking event at the expo? Yeah, absolutely. The uh, Usually on that Saturday night, there's a, a big event where uh, you've got a table set up and you have an opportunity to meet passes uh, all throughout the country and uh, shake hands with them, do brief introduction, uh, exchange business cards, and then um, you know, ultimately uh, they'll follow up with um, email or phone call to uh, you know ask to be added to your investor list. And, you know, on top of that, the expo, just throughout the whole couple days, uh, you're meeting people, whether you're in line for a coffee or, or just at a, a training session, you're constantly uh, meeting new individuals and have the opportunity to, you know, get to know them. And uh, it's just a great event as far as meeting new people and, you know, just uh, the fact that it's in the central part of the country, you know, it allows people from the East Coast uh, to network with people from the West Coast. So it's a, it's a great event and a great networking opportunity. I think we only have room each year for about 250 of those networking tables. Have you registered for one for this expo coming up? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be there for the, uh, the Southwest. I know we're doing it uh, geographically this year. So when you're a passive, you can kind of pick what region you want to focus on and go meet some of those leads in that area. Oh, that's interesting. I don't even know if they're going to do that. That's a good idea. All right, so we've, we've got an opportunity for people are going to be able to meet you at the Expo. they got to get there September 2nd and 3rd. If they just want to come to the Expo, it's just the 3rd. The 2nd is the bus tour where people get to go around and get in the bus and drive out and see actual real estate deals. And obviously, you being in Phoenix, so you're not going to be one of those. So let's uh, take a short break. Be right back with Mark Betts and the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. With me here today is Mark Petz, which is one of our national multifamily mentors. He lives out in Phoenix, Arizona. He's got over 5,000 units, of which uh, 25 apartments are passive. He also owns three deals that he is the lead investor in. Mark, let's talk about your deals. Um, Have any of them put out any returns yet, and what kind of returns are we looking at? Yeah, as a matter of fact, Del, uh, my first two deals sold in uh, July, July 21st. And um, so we were doing passive returns of uh, roughly 7% on both of them. And uh, the first deal was a uh, 48 unit um, that uh, I had purchased back in uh, December of 2018 and uh, ended up uh, producing about 132% return in 30 months when you include both the distributions and the capital gains. Uh, so that was a, a very successful first deal. And uh, the second deal was a 44 unit, and that one closed the same day uh, to the same buyer. 
and uh, similar uh, distributions, around uh, 7%, and uh, we ended up uh, doing uh, just under 100% return in 20 months on that one. So uh, that was a combination of the gains and the distributions. Uh, so, so both deals overall were you know, produced over uh, 50% uh, annually to uh, my passive investors. So uh, they, were, they were very pleased, to say the least. Do you have a third deal you're in still? Yes. Uh, so I, I've currently got a uh, 92 unit that's in uh, North Phoenix that has uh, just done phenomenally well. It's, uh, I've had it for a year now, and uh, we're already on paper uh, well above uh, doubling investors' money. So uh, the, the market here has been so strong and uh, just continues to uh, accelerate with the job growth occurring here. And then on top of that, I'm working on uh, closing my fourth deal here in another uh, about two and a half weeks. Okay. That property's in North Phoenix as well. Great. We really can't go into that because that would be solicitation over the radio, but uh, we look forward to hearing that once you've got that one nailed down. Let's talk about what kind of results you got out of the passive deals that you've been in since 2015. So that's that gives you, this is 21, so that's six years worth of experience. What kinds of results have you gotten out of the passive side of your investing? Yeah, I've had um, great success with them. It's uh, I, I don't have the uh, full average, but uh, just kind of ballparking it. Um, the average whole time was probably around three years, with an average return uh, roughly uh, ninety to one hundred percent on uh, all the deals combined. Uh, some of them uh, were well above that, and a few were below that. Uh, but that's about where they've uh, ended up on average, and it looks like. Uh, total that uh, see nine have sold uh, of the deals that I have invested in so far. That's interesting. So that that comes out to be a, a strong thirty percent return annualized over an average period of time over an average number of deals. Which, in other words, we're averaging averages, which really means nothing. I mean, any one deal could have been a hundred, two hundred percent return. Another deal might have been a fifty percent rate of return total. So it's different, right? But those are still good numbers, considering that right now my money sitting in a savings account is earning less than a half a percent. I think the 30% is a pretty good deal, along with the fact that it's tax-free while you're getting the cash flow out of it, and that's always helpful also. So right now, what's your plan? What's the plan for you and your family going forward from here, besides being a mentor? Yeah, so really my... Uh plan here over the next five years is um, I'm going to continue to do uh, one to two uh, lead deals a year. I, I still enjoy doing that. And then uh, I've got enough cash where as these passive deals sell, I um, have a, a group of leads that I, I typically want to continue investing passively with. And then I'm also exploring whether to do an IRO or not. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at all three pieces from you know the multifamily standpoint. But ultimately, I'm, I'm just trying to spend uh, you know as much time with uh, my kids and family, uh, you know, because they're going to be graduating from high school soon and, and may you know be off and running. So uh, really, working on uh, freeing up more time and uh, enjoying life is you know, my goal here the next five years and continuing to grow net worth, uh, you know, through multifamily investing. So you retired in 2020 when you bought your third property? Yes. And probably in after two, two and a half years, I was in a position where I had enough um, passive uh, cash flow to replace my income. So I I kept working and essentially created, you know, two income streams, uh, both, you know, the passive investing and then my uh, W-2 job. What about the wife? Does she work? Um, She takes care of the kids, and uh, that's a a pretty uh, big deal to take with uh, time constraints. What does she think about you not going to work every day and leaving her alone? (laughs) Sometimes she just wants me out of the house, but, uh, (laughs) you know, she, she helps out. He helps out with the business as well on, on some of the uh, the items and, and does uh, support at 110%. Last couple questions. You come from an engineering background, education, college education, 401ks, typical stuff that everybody comes from. Friends and family, anybody give you a hard time for doing this? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, some of them question and uh, want to understand a little bit more. I have two of my best friends, lifelong friends, uh, just joined in the last year and are investing with me and investing with some some other leads. So in general, they're they're seeing the results and kind of seeing my lifestyle and realizing, hey, there must be something to this, and uh, you know, wanting to explore it a little bit more and uh, are jumping in. Excellent. 
Very good. Well, we've got um, the the expo coming up there, so I intend to see you. And you bringing the wife with you? Or? She will not make the event. She's uh, tied up with my little one uh, in a soccer tournament, actually. Oh. So we're splitting forces. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Can't lose that soccer tournament. That's important. So we'll be able to see you up there, I hope. And I uh, really want to thank you for coming on and, and sharing. I also want to thank you for being a, a national mentor. That's quite a feat to be able to stay abreast of everything all over the country. So thank you very much. Absolutely, Dell. It's an honor. And I'll also mention there's a, a two-day coming up in Phoenix on September 25th and 26th. So, so I'll be at that All right, great. Well. Let's get everybody We're out to that event. one. You can all meet him, meet Mark. And uh, for all of you out there, remember this. Mark, myself, and everybody else here, we don't do this for a little more money. We do this for a lifestyle. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station, its affiliates, its management, or advertisers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.